This film is intended for eye surgeons for training and education purposes. Viewer discretion is strongly recommended. Hi, this is an elderly lady who has a hypermature morgagnian cataract with faecolytic glaucoma. Uh, the slit lamp examination shows that the dense nucleus is sinking down in the bag. We can see the liquid cortex occupying the more superior portion of the bag while the dense nucleus is occupying the lower half of the bag. Primarily because of gravity, it is just sunk down. Slit lamp examination does not reveal any phacodonosis as such, suggesting that the zonules could be alright. So let's see how things work out in the surgery. The intraocular pressures are all controlled, the cornea is cleared off, so visualization is not an issue here. Staining of the capsule is done. The anterior capsule is punctured with the 26 number needle and then the rest of the capsule atomy is being performed with the forceps. The milky cortex escapes out a little bit, hampers a little bit of visualization but it's alright, it's not so bad. So I have a rexus of about 4.5 millimeter. In the ideal world I would have liked to have a slightly bigger rexus but uh, we need to manage with this size rexus now. So again the challenge is going to be dealing with the mobile nucleus in an empty bag. Since the zonules are very healthy here, this case seems to be alright and uh, shouldn't be such a problem. The only challenge is going to deal with this mobile nucleus and how we are going to divide it. So I begin my nucleus management by initially sculpting which is my usual technique so that I can hold the core of the nucleus and then before I starting to chop. Once I've reached around 50 to 60 percent depth of the nucleus, I've decided to now perform the direct chop technique and I'm going to use the horizontal chop technique here. I'm switching my choppers from a sharp chopper to a blunt chopper. Uh, this is the Chang chopper which is going to hook the endonucleus. The goal here is to divide the nucleus without causing any stress on the erexus margin as well as on the bag and the zonules. So that is going to be your goal and to achieve that I'm going to use the horizontal chop technique. As I bury into the nucleus and the nucleus is pulled centrally, the chopper goes and hooks the equator of the nucleus under direct visualization. I am pulling the nucleus towards me so that I can get access to the endonucleus and I don't have to go to a very extreme periphery. And nucleus is tilted up to ensure that the tip of the chopper is far away from the posterior capsule. And then the horizontal chop is being performed. Care is taken that the lateral separation maneuvers are not extended beyond the midpoint. So only the distal part of the nucleus is cracked and it's all right because we don't have enough space here because the rexus is also small. The bag is empty. So I don't want to put any more stress. So I'm going to stop at this point, rotate the nucleus and continue the chopping maneuver. Although the nucleus is quite dense, the chopping processes are occurring quite effortlessly. Just observe the background sound of the vacuum building up and then the chop maneuver takes place. Just try to appreciate the sound uh, which is coming at the background.
Before emulsifying the second part of the nucleus, I am going to inject some more OVD and then proceed with dividing the remaining half of the nucleus. The usual principles of uh, managing the fragments in the posterior plane and keeping the turbulence and lens shatter to the minimum are being followed. Time to emulsify the last two fragments. Please note that the chopper and the FECO tip together form a sort of a barrier to prevent the tiny parts of the fragments from flying around and coming and hitting the endothelium. The fragment will be just dancing around the FECO tip as it is getting emulsified. The last fragment is again emulsified and again please note the lack of lens chatter and turbulence and it's being uh, emulsified in quite a posterior plane in a very controlled manner. There is hardly any cortex in this, I'm just trying to irrigate out. The visibility is slightly hazy because of the milky cortex which was mixed with the viscoelastic sticking around and probably coating the endothelium, it's washed out, time to implant the lens and rest is going to be the usual stuff. Let's rewind and try to learn few things. So when you're trying to manage a Morgagnon cataract with an empty bag and a relatively smaller rexus here, it's important that we don't overdo things here. So I'm using horizontal chop because I think this is the best way to deal with these mobile nucleus because the physics of horizontal chop ensures that uh, there is no stress imparted on the zonules because the movement of the two instruments is towards each other rather than towards the posterior capsule or the bag. And secondly, it's important to understand that uh, we don't have to get a full thickness crack through and through. Even the distal half of the crack is good enough. We can achieve all the cracks in a very controlled manner by dealing with each of the fragment separately. That was it. Thank you for watching and hope you found this helpful.